It's the Old Doctor Who Show, episode number 160, The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Welcome back to the Old Doctor Who Show, uh, your classic and new and whatever it's going to be, Doctor Who Review Podcast. I am Eric. I am doing this review here alone. Uh, my better half, Dan, is not around, uh, so it's just me, but I couldn't. I could it not uh, talk about uh, the legend of Ruby Sunday. I literally I've just watched it uh, not that long ago, about an hour ago. I have uh, my thoughts are very scattered. I tried to record a review already. I did like twenty five minutes. It was it was pretty good. It's a pretty good review. Uh, I did not record for whatever reason. The file was corrupted. So I'm just going to jump into it again. So let's just. Uh, yeah, it's hard without Dan because Dan won't, he's not stopping me. Uh, so I can just keep running and I'm not, he's supposed to say something. I'm supposed to go, blah, 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 blah. hit the button, shake the crime stick, shake the crime stick. <laughs> Everywhere I land, a woman appears. In every dream, I'm there. She doesn't know why, but she remembered them. Doctor, there's something wrong. Whatever it is. Here it comes. Dan, who's not here, this is the legend of Ruby Sunday. Uh, this is the seventh episode of series 14, lucky number 14, or season one. Uh, not sure. It's one of the two of them. It is written by Russell T. Davies, directed by Jamie Donahue. In it, the doctor has headed off to unit. He has decided to use their resources to figure out two problems. Uh, one, he wants to know who this strange woman is that keeps popping up episode after episode. And two, he wants to find out who is the mother of Ruby Sunday. Uh, okay, normally I would ask Dan what he thought, and I can't now. Um, and so I'm going to try to do my best to cover the highs and lows of The Legend of Ruby Sunday by myself, being careful to remember to cover all the bits that I had previously already talked about. All right. So the overall, overall, I would say, um, I just kind of want to talk about the end, uh, but I'll start at the beginning. Uh it was it was enjoyable. I liked uh, going back to unit. I loved seeing Mel. I I liked Kate. Uh, one thing I will say about Kate, I think she is a great actress. I wish they would give her more to do other than being stern all the time and, and yelling at things and saying I'm the head of unit and I demand that you this. So. Nothing against her, and I enjoy her character and everything. I just wish that they would give her more stuff, right? I'd like a little bit more. I'm glad we got a little scene between her and the doctor where she's like, you have a granddaughter? Why don't you visit her? And he's like, well, you know, I uh, you see what I do. I, I bring death and destruction everywhere I go, so I'll expose all of you people to it. Uh, but not my granddaughter. That's a little bit of a hard sell for me. Uh, that would be on my list of things that I'm not so sure about. I'll write them uh, over there. I, l I really like the um, the kid genius uh, character. So the 13-year-old kid who's, who's super smart. Because I feel like that is a staple of classic Doctor Who especially. You've got Adric in his potato sack and his little math star. Uh, you've got uh, Nissa. I remember she was also a a young math prodigy, from what I remember. I feel like we, we, several several um, uh, characters in Doctor Who have fit that role, and I like the young super. And and honestly, I felt like a lot of his the faces that he was making and not understanding, like all of that stuff, or he was really excited about stuff. I like I liked it. I liked it. Maybe that's not going to be for everybody, but for me, I really liked it. I liked, um, I just like that, that whole cast thing. Now there was a couple of, um, sort of elements that they do where it's like, okay, right. They've got a time, um, window and the doctor's like, but if, you know, they're like, we could only get a black and white Polaroid. And the doctor's like, well, if we know where every snowflake is and we have a, a v VHS tape 
it'll work better. I'm not just so sure about that. Um, speaking of the time portal, now some of you may have watched the time portal and thought to yourself, like, "Oh, this is what is this? Some kind of uh, time machine danger room? This is this is dumb. That's not how time works." I think that's exactly how time works. So if you were thinking that when you were watching it, when I was thinking that, I was like, yes, that's, I've been wanting to write a story about that because that's how I think that uh, time space works, right? So if you think of time space in the same way that you you think of like a, a light spectrum, right? So you have the light spectrum and we can only perceive a small fraction of the light spectrum, right? So from red to uh, violet, right? So that's all that we can see, but we can't see infrared. You can't see ultraviolet. There's all of these things in the spectrum. I feel that time is the same in the, on the same type of spectrum and our brains are only capable of perceiving a very small slice of that that we call now uh we have a brain that is able to store memory so that gives us a a sense of the past it's not real uh i can't you know i can remember when i was a kid but i can't point at it it's just it doesn't exist it's it's only the memory of it we're only in the now However, I think with, uh, you know, enhancements or machinery or computers or whatever, we will be able to expand that uh, perception and see the past or see the future. Um, that opens up other questions about uh, free will and, and all of those things. That's for, I guess, a separate podcast. Um, but so when I saw that, that idea of like having, a, you know, how would a time portal work it's like yes yes i mean whales have been doing it for years we don't talk to whales they're down there looking at you know the 1400s um so i I liked that part the old i like the idea of old tech mixed in with new tech so when they were watching the vhs tape on the old tv like i kind of like i like that stuff even if the doctor was like analyze every pixel but it's it's an analog tape. Um, but in, in any case, uh, before they get the tape, right? So the doctor, in order to do this magic stuff, he sends Ruby back uh, to get her mother and to get the, uh, the VHS tape that they watch every Christmas. What a sad Christmas that must be, right? It's like, uh, hey, it's the, get, the, get the hot cocoa and, oh, pull, pull out the tape of my abandonment. Right. And sitting around year after year, uh, after a while, after a while, the tape would probably break. I don't know if you ever had a VHS tape before or a Betamax like I had it uh, in my household at one point. Like it's probably going to be, you know, not holding up. You're going to have to scotch tape that that sucker. Um, but when they get there, they have to uh, leave and they have to leave a sitter for the grandmother. And who do they get? They get old Mrs. Flood. They're like, hey, Mrs. Flood, come on in here. You're going to watch uh, grandma. And as soon as they leave, it's like that dark story you'd hear at a nursing home. With you. One of the orderlies is doing bad things to your loved one. Um, so when Mrs. Flood comes in, she does make a comment of, oh, I'm always hiding somewhere, uh, which is which had followed that uh, scene that I talked about with Kate and the doctor uh, when they're talking about, um, you know, his his granddaughter. And this is the first time also that Ruby learns that the doctor can look like someone else. Right. Because he's convinced that uh, the woman that keeps appearing, uh, the twist at the end um, is his is Susan uh, Foreman from the. Uh, his granddaughter. And so she's, she's f learning about like, Oh, why would a doctor or why would you ever change your appearance? Uh, and he says, you know, to, to help yourself or to, to save your life, but also if you want to hide. So it's not lost on anybody that that's what she says. Like when she goes in, she's like, I already mentioned a TARDIS. Now I'm talking about, the, you know, so it's like, clearly she is a, uh, time Lord of some kind. And at that point, I was like, oh, Dan, Dan, you're going to be happy because it's it could be the the Ronnie. Like you could finally get your uh, Ronnie jacket. You could bust out those Ronnie under underoos, throw them on, dance in the street because uh, I hope I hope it ends up 
being the Rani. I mean, if it ends up being the master, I will be uh, very disappointed. I don't think it will be. They've done that so much. I can't imagine they're going to do that. It certainly can be some other entity. You know, it could be some other Time Lord. Um, like, it's like, you know, who knows? But I, I feel like it could be the Rani. Like, at that moment, when that happened... I was like, oh, Dan's going to be psyched. It's it's the Ronnie. We're finally getting the Ronnie. So the darkness comes. As soon as they leave again, it's just like, hey, say bye to your loved ones. Now I'm going to steal your lunch money, right? She's like, get me some ice cubes. And she's like, shut your mouth. And so the, the darkness comes out. And then she says, he who shall not be named is coming. And it's very, very scary. Um, at that at that point, I feel like at this point, point on or from from the moment that you we start ratcheting that stuff up I really like uh I really like this story I liked how they turned the TARDIS into something that should be feared I don't think I have any recollection of Doctor Who doing that before um so within the I guess I, I could save that for later so we get back to the um the danger room, the time portal area, right? So so we're in there. The doctor and Ruby, she's using her inner power even before the computer's on because the kids, the, the uh, super, uh, super smart kids like, I haven't even turned the machine on. See, this is why I'm not an actor because if they had said, hey, okay, Eric, you're reading for the role of the genius kid. I start out with that face. You haven't even turned on the computer yet, right? Um, and so he hadn't turned on the computer, but she's, it's already snowing. So you know that she is a very powerful entity. We're not quite sure what she is. We're not quite sure who her mom is yet. But she don't even need the machine, right? This is like, um, you know, Paul, Paul using whatever. I can't even. I was going to mess up a Dune reference there. I was going to talk about Dune. It was like Paul in in, uh, David Lynch's Dune when he uses the uh, weirding way without the voice modulator. But that's uh, the the weirding module is only uh, canon for the David Lynch movie. All you young people, you're all into the the new stuff. Um, So where was I? I don't even remember where it was. This is where Dan would uh, bail me out. Okay, so we go back. We're in the machine. Uh, we're in the machine. The snow's coming. They flip it on. Finally, they flip it on. It's ju- using so much juice. So much juice uh, they're using on the machine. And then we start to see what's going on, right? We start to see Ruby's mother come. They're looking. She's always in shadow. No matter where they're looking, everyone's looking around. No one can uh, No one can uh, find it. Uh, she is. There's also the um, guard who gets a name. But not much, uh, not much else. Uh, after his untimely death, he's sort of discarded. That's why, again, you think about the doctor is like, I don't want to introduce my grand, uh, my granddaughter into this because everybody around me dies, like this guy. And he's like, Yeah, could you just come in here and and look around the corner? Look where this lady's pointing at. Just look around the corner. And it and it felt like um, a scene in Goodfellas, where uh, Robert De Niro is like, Hey, get some dresses. Go get some dress around the corner. No, no, it's around the corner. Uh, Yeah, so he unfortunately dies. Uh, But we can't see who Ruby's mother is, right? Uh, No matter how hard they try. She's pointing at the doctor. But at that point, you're wondering like, oh, is she pointing at the doctor in the past? Is she pointing at the doctor in the now, right? In the... the, um, Time, I keep calling it a time tunnel, the time uh, portal room, danger room, gymnasium. Uh, or is she pointing at the TARDIS that's about to appear? Or we don't know. It, it, it's, it's unclear, I think. Um, so, but they still can't see her. Then the black, the black nightmare, fog, weird stuff comes. And they're not sure, again, if it's in the present or if it's in the past. Everyone goes crazy. The guy that uh, I mentioned his name, I know he's got, he gets a name and they talk about him. I think he's a colonel or something. Unclear. He is killed. He is, he is turned into sand. The doctor is then like, I'm going to see uh, my granddaughter. Pack a lunch. I'm going to see my granddaughter. So he goes to see his granddaughter. 
uh, and they have a, a interesting meeting. And, and and as a viewer, you're like, could this be his granddaughter? Like, is this Susan? There's, you know, it's it's you know, you're not sure. You in your head, you're like, it's probably not his granddaughter because they're playing that too early. He gets there, she doesn't recognize him. He's trying. He throws out those dreams. Are don't you know? Fine time. Uh, yeah, all of that stuff. And she kind of knows, but she's not. And at this moment, it really gets good. And again, I talked about how much I liked the tension of a weird TARDIS. Like the TARDIS then appears and starts making the, I'm uh, sorry, the TARDIS starts making noise in the unit, uh, main headquarters, bridge, whatever. Why does everybody call um, uh, people mum, mom? Is that just like a same as like saying sir? You would say mom, sir. I don't know. I always I always wonder. It's probably an e- easy, obvious answer, but everybody's always saying mom. Hey, mom. It's like, and they're saying moms to moms, but also to moms. Uh, so yeah. So the TARDIS appears, and then it's very interesting. And Kate throws out that great line. She's like. Uh, I hate to say this, but what if the, uh, you know, the evil black smoke is here, but we can't see it. And she's 100 percent right. And the everybody's getting crazy. And then all of this. Now we start, um, you know, they're analyzing the videotape at this point. And this is where it reminds me of one of my favorite John Carpenter movies. It's called Prince of Darkness. It is a masterpiece. It is one of the best movies that combines sort of. um high uh high end high end uh mathematics and logic and reason and the intellectual side of things with the spiritual with faith based so uh without for anyone who has not seen the movie they discover in this abandoned church um this like obelisk sphere filled with like swirling green liquid and it it's old it it's older than anything we've ever seen and they're going through all of these uh, documents. So they they bring in a team of the best scientists and they and researchers, and they bring in a um, some religious people, right? Because it's in a religious thing, and they're so you're getting sort of both of those angles. And one of the uh, scientists is a translator who knows ancient languages, and she, it's her task to like sort of decipher all this this ancient language and as she does she becomes possessed and that's what i reminded me of immediately with the actress who plays the um harbinger i forget what her name is there's a lot of like take that name and rearrange it it's harbinger it's uh tardis it's uh, you know um so as she does that and her eyes go white and she's saying all this like crazy um you know, a cult like language. And that's when I was like, so dialed in. I'm like, I, I love all, of, I love everything that's happening right now. I am in and it's tense. And then that, the, the TARDIS is there and it's scary. And the doctor's back at the other place where, uh, Susan twist is giving her speech to another empty room. Now, when they first gave the speech, it was empty and they're like, Oh, it's just, she just practicing. And then the second time they do it, it's still empty. Like you got probably have some staff that don't have a lot to do. Might want to sit down and make it feel like a little bit like she's not in an empty room, but it's just empty. Um, so she goes and she starts freaking out uh, live on stage during her speech. And it reminded me of uh, that scene in Magnolia when the game show host starts to, to really lose it. And he's reading the answers instead of asking the questions. And uh, Mel sort of on the edge. And the whole thing is very tense. Like, so the doctor is like, hey, Ruby, get in, uh, you know, get in the uh, the dream room. I, why can't I re- remember the name of the time uh, lasagna? It's not time lasagna. That doesn't even make any sense. It's like, um, what is it? The time portal, whatever. We'll call it the danger room because that's just keep thinking of them X-Men. Uh, so, yeah, she's, she goes into the, the danger room. And the uh, at first, Kate's like, "If he says go, you go." Again, that's how I would that's how I would have read the role of Kate, uh, which is why I'm here and not um, not anywhere else. Um, so yeah, so she goes down. She's in there, and she starts that starts to regenerate the Christmas Eve again. Uh, her mom's there, and her mo- again. Um, we don't know who her mom is. They're not going to tell us at this point. I don't remember if I said this. I don't think I said this in this video, but I said this in the last video. 
I'm like, okay, White Guardian, Black Guardian is probably dead. Uh, I'm still holding on that the Doctor and Ruby maybe are both still timeless children. But then I was like, okay, I'm thinking about the scenes where the Doctor's like uh, talking with Kate and she's like, you have a granddaughter. And he's like, yeah, I have a, I have a granddaughter. That means you have children. And he's like, no, not yet or something like that. And then I'm thinking and I'm like, oh, what if, what if Ruby is somehow the doctor's daughter because Ruby is the mother of Susan and the baby, no, because the baby left there is Ruby. So is Susan leaving Ruby or is it? Because it can't be, like, it. it's not going to be Ruby leaving herself, right? Because I feel like if if there wasn't a um, 73 yards, then you could make that. It would be like, oh, that's actually okay. I could see that. But they're not going to do literally do that again where it's like, that woman over there, that was you. That other woman over there, that was you. Like, I, they're not, that's not going to happen. Um Ruby being, I don't know, it's all crazy. It's all, it's nuts. See, I need to watch it at least one more time. I should not be talking about this stuff after having already talked about this stuff and then talking about this stuff again because uh, it's um, very scatterbrained. I'll, I'll sit on it and I'll talk with Dan, but there's, there's uh, pieces are forming. Uh, not, I'm not 100% done with the idea that they're brother and sister. And there were a couple of things in this episode where I'm like, mm, that still could, still could mean that when she's learning about face changing. She's learning about face changing now because next episode she's going to die and then she's going to regenerate. Um, all of that is, is possible still. So I'm not, I'm not done uh, with that theory. Okay. So anyway, she's there. <clears throat> All of this stuff starts going on. The white eyes, the the demonic language, all of this stuff, the swirlingness. And then you start figuring out what... And again, it's on a computer monitor, very much like... uh, If you want to do some homework, if you have not seen it, uh, go rent or... Uh, yeah, I guess you have to rent it uh, or or find the DVD that you already owned of Prince of Darkness. Uh, Oh, it's wonderful. So one of... it's. Yeah, I think it's my my favorite John Carpenter movies, and I I love Halloween. Halloween, first Halloween is brilliant, but I feel like Prince of Darkness is one of the few movies that really scared me and stuck with me, and I think was a huge influence. We're not here to talk about Prince of Darkness, so you get those the um, the, the 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 letters are going around, and he starts rambling on. He's like. I was there before time, and I was there. And you know my brother. You know the toy maker. And I'm like, yes. And you know uh, the maestro. And I'm like, I remember the maestro. And you know, and then a couple of names got said. And I'm like, I think maybe. Is that somebody from, you know, uh, an old Peter Davison? I don't know. They may have said when he went through that name, I have to watch it again and see like, oh, is that who so-and-so? Doesn't matter. You get to the Sutek. Uh, oh my God! I love Pyramids of Mars. I love Pyramids of Mars so much. That is that is the center of my TARDIS heart, and it beats strong for that error of Tom Baker Doctor Who. And so once it said Sutek, I was oh, I was just I was just yelling at my dogs, and they were not happy because it was thundering out. So it added to the you know to the intensity of the scene for me in a real way. Um, and I was very, very excited about that. Now, my knowledge of Sutek is limited to Pyramids of Mars. I know that he's made many appearances in the comics, and I'm sure in probably there's big Finnish stories and novelizations and all sorts of stuff that his backstory and maybe some of those names that they said will resonate immediately with people like, oh, of course, he's the number is the of the, the of the three or whatever. I, I didn't know that. My memory of Sutek is Pyramids of Mars. I a lot of times I remember he was just sitting in a seat waiting in a uh, waiting on Mars uh just to go through the time corridor. Yeah, another time corridor, right? Wasn't there a time corridor in like a sarcophagus that went from like here to Mars and Mars was just sort of a set with with some laser lights. Uh, amazing. Amazing. And what a great cliffhanger. So at the cliff, at the end, like y- you get the sense that Ruby's going to see her mother, right? At that point, 
they're going to there's going to be a turnaround or something. So that's a mystery that's that's saved, right? So we don't know who Ruby is. The Susan Twist mystery, that's pretty much been solved. We know that Sutek. The uh, Mrs. Flood mystery, the Black Guardian, White Guardian, that's dead. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, didn't work out. But we know, I feel like we know it's a Time Lord. Who that is, or Ronnie, uh, or, or, or what? I guess it could be someone else that knows time. It's a Time Lord, right? So it's another Time Lord. Who that is, we don't know. I'm very excited. Um, yeah, I wish Dan was here. Anyway, that's it. I had to talk about it. I'm glad that we got this chance together. I'm going to post this tonight, so it's probably the same night, and do very little editing, which is actually makes my life a lot easier. All right, until next time. Yeah.